Kevin Bacon was in Apollo 13. Apollo 13 was directed by Ron Howard. An anonymous family member of mine works for Ron Howard. An anonymous member of my family is part of my family. I make YouTube videos. You watch them. In fact, you're watching one right now. Congratulations, dear viewer. You are now at least six degrees from Mr. Kevin Bacon. In case you've never heard of Kevin Bacon, you should probably get out from under that rock. He's an American actor most notable for his roles in Footloose, Friday the 13th, and stealing the hearts of Gen Xers since the 80s. Legend has it that you can link any Hollywood actor to Kevin Bacon within six degrees of separation, each degree being a movie that the actors have been in together. There's even an HTML site to do it for you. This comes from the theory that any two humans on Earth can be linked within six degrees of social connection, unless your family is dead and you have no friends. Kevin Bacon also did this movie last year called They Slash Them, get it? They slash them. Yeah. Nowadays, he's basically a living meme. I mean, just look at this movie where he goes to Africa because he got drunk at a party and decided to kidnap an 18-year-old boy to save his career. The Air Up There is a 1994 movie starring Evan Lakin. Just kidding, it's Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Bacon. I feel like people treat Kevin Bacon like a seal of approval, like you're not legit unless you have Kevin Bacon peeking over your title. Much like Bible Man, I picked up this VHS at a thrift store because it just looked too goofy not to own. If you go ahead and look on the back, you'll find yourself a summary of the movie. Big screen favorite Kevin Bacon stars as Jimmy Dolan, a fast-talking college basketball coach who will go to the ends of the earth to bring home all-star talent. His hunt takes him to Wanabi, Africa, where he discovers Saleh, a native warrior whose head's above the rest. Unfortunately, Saleh has no interest in the pressure-filled world of college sports, but when the Wanabis decide to settle their differences with a neighboring tribe on the basketball court, it becomes a whole new ball game. Yeah. The movie itself had a budget of $17 million, and despite lots of criticism about the unoriginality and questionable ethics of the plot, the movie actually turned $21 million at the box office. For all of you mathos, that's $4 million profit. But what do the critics know anyway? Let's see what the internet has to say about the air up there. Vivian percent 20 j says, So Kevin Bacon is an amazing actor. He does really well in this movie. My only complaint is the bad acting of people in the tribes, etc. I know they couldn't really go out and find a bunch of amazing Af amazing actors with Africa can accents, though. The concept of this movie is also very cool as well. Vivian gave it five stars. Let's see what the next one has to say. Uh, I guess unnamed person gives it three and a half stars. Bacon in Wildest Africa, with basketball as his mission. What the hell can I say? Jimmy Dolan shake and bake. Bobby Wilson didn't care for it. <laughs> and finally, from Annie S. My friend Sarah is in this movie smiley face. She gave it two stars. Well, it seems that Disney has always been putting out mediocre films, not just in recent times. And as for me, I'm personally excited to see if this movie is a hunk of junk or a slam dunk. But first, let's check out the previews on this thing. To start off, we get this awesome ad for Tombstone, a 1993 cowboy flick that got tons of good reviews. It certainly looks cool, even though the narration sounds like it was done by Duke Nukem. I've got balls of steel. Hmm, babelicious. Also, damn, this movie had some big names. I mean, you got Kurt Russell, Val Kilmer, Bill Paxton, and everybody's favorite cowboy, Sam Elliott. Lone Star Barbecue Sauce, the perfect partner for your chicken. Next up, we have The Iron Will, another Disney sports flick from the 90s that they were pumping out like a sweatshop. It just looks so goofy. I mean, the way that the sled racers, like, sabotage each other with devious little tricks. The next movie is a bit more mature. Cabin Boy, both written and directed by Chris Elliott, is about a guy who goes on an adventure with pirates, and that's about all I got from the trailer. Thank you, fellow crewmates. The final preview actually came after the movie, so I guess it's a uh, post-view. I couldn't find anything about why they would put it here, but I have a few theories. VHS tapes don't normally start from the beginning, so if you forgot to rewind it or maybe you rented it from a friend or from a store, putting ads after the movie might be a way to sneak in some extra sales to some unsuspecting viewers. Just like me, because today's sponsor is... Just kidding. Today's... There is no sponsor today. This ad is really cool though. I watched Nightmare Before Christmas when I was little, but I recently went back and I have a really big appreciation for the animation and the music, especially since I found out that Danny Elfman was the singing voice of Jack Skeleton. I never knew that. I, I, I love little girls that 
And of course, much like old video games, it just looks and sounds a lot better on original hardware. I'll definitely be picking up a Nightmare Before Christmas VHS if I find one. Alright, that's enough dilly-dallying. Let's get into it. And now, our feet presentation. So the air up there starts out with a monologue by Jimmy Dolan about his early days in basketball. Once a renowned player for the St. Joseph's basketball team, he is now the assistant coach. We also get to meet Buddy Wilson, which is also the name of my dog. Buddy is a high school prodigy with his eyes set on fame and glory, but Jimmy shatters his ego after beating him in a one-on-one. -on -one. Jimmy then gets in an argument with the head coach, Ray Fox, because apparently they've been tracking this kid for three months. Or years? I really wasn't paying attention. Apparently they've been sending him dozens of hoodies and buying him lobster dinners, and this is made out to be a joke, but it's far from the worst bribery I've seen personally in the sports world. Even at my own college I see stuff like this. I mean, high schoolers coming in with agents? Why don't I get an agent? After getting drunk at the St. Joseph's alumni dinner, Jimmy has the brilliant idea to get up in front of everybody and decide that he's going to recruit a player from the Wanabi tribe in Africa. Now all he has to do is learn a new language and steal a player from a village that literally depends on winning basketball games to survive, all to cope with the fact that his mentor is retiring and he won't be able to goof off anymore. Yes! On a serious note, the dynamic between these characters is actually really deep. The fact that Ray has not only been a basketball coach to Jimmy, but also a career coach, makes it feel more like a father-son relationship than anything. On the bus to a town near Wanabi, Jimmy is met with harassment for simply asking directions. <laughs> These same guys mock the Wanabi for being stupid, and eventually just straight up bully Jimmy into the wilderness. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for... Wacky Antics. Jimmy finally stumbles upon two young men who lead him to Wanabi and introduce him to Saleh, the boy he's been looking for. Jeez, man, some of this dialogue is awful. It's like an AI wrote it. Are you healthy up here? Never said that. Well, in a real twist, Saleh is actually the prince of the Wanabi tribe, so Jimmy has to answer to his father to get him to play for St. Joseph's. For some reason, this scene looks like a green screen, but I know it was filmed in Africa. Kevin, you better start answering questions! From this point forward, Jimmy has to integrate with the Wanabi in order to gain their trust and ultimately betray them. Sound familiar? Here's a hint. It started out as a joke, but I'm honestly starting to believe that Avatar ripped this movie off hardcore. It's just a little Disney film that went under the radar. Nobody's gonna know if we ripped it off. Well, I know. I know. Well, I guess if we're going down the list, then that means Jimmy has to royally screw up and get the tribe to hate them, and then ultimately do what's best for them in the end. And Jimmy soon finds exactly that. Sister Susan criticizes Jimmy for only being there to take Saleh back to America so he can relive his youth, despite his aging body. But Jimmy does the exact same thing right back to her, accusing her of running away from home, and this entire time he's holding in a massive shit. And wouldn't you know it, we get a nice sensual close-up of Kevin taking a shit in the woods with added fart sound effects. Then, after being chased and saved by a young man, he goes to shake his hand, and his hand's covered in shit? Why? Is this like one of those, uh, Tarantino or Dan Schneider things where they purposely put feet in the scene? Saleh actually lets Jimmy in on a secret. The Mingori, the a-holes from town, are actually taking over the Wanabi land and stealing their livestock. Well, let's just hope cows aren't considered a recruiting violation. Jimmy attempts to win over Arudu, Saleh's father, by buying him livestock, but the plan backfires when the Mingori show up and burn down the entire village and ruin Saleh's sister's wedding. Taking partial blame for the events that happened the night before, Jimmy offers to coach the Wanabi basketball team in a last-ditch effort to save their land from the Mingori. And if they win, Arudu lets Saleh play for St. Joseph's. It isn't all straightforward, though. After the point guard for the Wanabi gets an injury after practice, Jimmy has to step up to the plate and go from a has-been to an is-now. An is-is. This is actually a really cool part of the story. Jimmy finally starts to cope with the fact that he's never going to relive his youth, but then he's thrust right back into a game and expected to perform the same as he did when he was younger. But before he can play on the team, he must become a Winabi. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that the Fire Temple music? Huh? I guess it is. And speaking of music, the next track that plays sounds like In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. And if you haven't already noticed, Jimmy must climb the nearby plateau and leave a larger part of himself there in order to prove his worth as a Wanabi. Oh no. 
Oh lord indeed, what the fuck are they about to do to him? The last guy didn't look like he turned out so hot. And can he even play with fresh stitches? And finally, it's time for the big game. Honestly, out of all of the things that Avatar ripped off from this movie, I think the 3v3 half-court game where the Navi and Jake Sully have to play against the humans has gotta be the most shameless. I mean, come on James Cameron. And wouldn't you know it, after Jimmy sustains an injury on his knee, he decides to call off the game and leave Saleh back with the Wanabi. Much to the dismay of Ray Fox, who flew all the way out to Africa to watch this game. Yeah, I'd be kind of pissed off too if my subordinate decided to uh, ditch work and take a two-week vacation to Africa. After the Mingori blow out Jimmy's knee in a Karate Kid-type move, Saleh's older brother decides to step in after years of service to the opposing tribe. But it doesn't even matter that his brother is playing because just before the clock runs out, Saleh pulls the old Jimmy Dolan shake and bake and seals the victory. The town is safe! You saved the town! You did it! The final scene is Saleh introduced as part of the St. Joseph's team with Jimmy Dolan as the new head coach. Oh, and in case you were wondering if this is the same St. Joseph's from Philadelphia, it isn't. I can't remember what the mascot is, but I know for sure that it's not the Bulls unless they changed their mascot recently. I joked around a lot, but I honestly had a really good time with this movie. I went in fully expecting it to be another cookie-cutter Disney sports film, but it actually turned out to be really smart and detailed. And even though a few of the jokes were a bit cringe-inducing, way more than a few of them got a good laugh out of me. Kevin Bacon puts forward a really solid performance, and it's really cool to see him in a role that puts him between being a cocky teenager and a mature adult, who's way past his prime. Saleh is also extremely likable due to how he's written and how he's played by Charles Jatanga Mena. But someone who isn't likable at all is Sister Susan, the worst part about this movie. I briefly mentioned her earlier, but she's really insignificant to the plot, and she's just really insufferable whenever she's around. She's a member of the church, but her only real role in the story is to criticize everything Jimmy is doing and kill the vibe whenever anybody's having fun. They try to play up the romance between her and Jimmy, but it never really works, and Jimmy usually just roasts her ass whenever she has some sly comment. And then at the end of the movie, they kiss? Why? But I do think calling this movie bad is a huge stretch. Sure, the basic premise isn't anything spectacular, but a movie is so much more than just the basic plot. Just to push this point even further, some of my favorite movies are basic or just flat out bad. But just like those random YouTube characters from the 2000s that we still keep up with, it's less about the intended content and more about the personality, the lore, and the subtext. In the case of this movie, there's just so many memeable moments and characters that I find myself having a hard time being excessively critical. And apart from being funny, this movie has tons of little golden nuggets from extremely talented writers. The biggest example is that somehow, despite how goofy the main premise is, this movie manages to drive home a really strong thematic element that weaves between all of the story beats and conflicts. Critics will say the air up there is just another underdog story with a bare-bones premise, but what I see is a 40-year-old man, crippled by the thought of hanging up his jersey and his pride forever, only to realize his true role as a mentor through the success of those that he coaches. And the title even reflects this sentiment, with Jimmy leaving the last remaining part of his youth on top of a mountain. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more content, check out my video on Bible Man. And don't forget to check out my socials, check out my merch store, and leave comments and suggestions below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.